I want to hit you about something that is extremely vital. It goes down to the basis of your rights in a democracy. It has to do with two things. In Egypt, we've got an ongoing street revolution. Here in the United States, there is a kid who was arrested on February 20th. He's 19 years old for um, making a sarcastic statement during a video game in which he was being insulted. He was called crazy. And he said, oh yeah, I'm going to go out and get a gun and mow down a bunch of kids in a grammar school, huh? And LOL and just kidding. Um, he's been arrested. He was arrested on February 20. He has been in jail for five months now. He's been kept in solitary confinement, which is a form of torture. Um, he has recently been kept naked for fear that he would kill himself. Well, you'd kill yourself too if you were in solitary confinement. Take it from me. I've been in solitary confinement for 15 years with an illness. It is torture. It is ghastly. It is hideous. How does this relate to what's going on in Egypt? In Egypt, we've had one of the most remarkable, actually the most remarkable street demonstration in human history. Um, depending on who's counting, uh, 33 million people took to the streets of Egypt. That's 40% of the population of Egypt, even if that is radically overblowing it, exaggerating it. Let's say 10 million people took to the streets of Egypt. That would be one out of every eight Egyptians. Um, that's huge. Let's get the makeup lady in here. We're doing this in 90 degree heat. Um, the real problem is something that nobody has detected. First of all, Egypt is debating what a democracy is. is does a democracy mean that you vote in a guy that he basically does everything in his power to overturn democracy itself and that you keep him for the four years in a constitution that he jerry-rigged and that you really never had any more say in than a simple yes or no, a referendum? Or does a democracy consist of being able to do what we did in Wisconsin when people disagreed with what the governor was doing when he made it illegal to have a union, a public union, uh, a public workers union, and people took to the streets and tried to impeach him, tried to demonstrate that what he was doing so outraged the public will that he had no more right to office despite being voted in. It's the Egyptians who are debating which is a democracy right now. But there's something else going on that isn't hitting the headlines. Over 300 Muslim Brotherhood members have been hunted down and arrested. What are the charges against them? I mean, remember, when the Democrats win an election, they do not hunt down the Republicans and arrest them. And when the Republicans win, they do not hunt down the Democrats and arrest them. That's not how democracy works. You need adversarial parties able to express adversarial point of view, points of view without being arrested for it. These guys in Egypt were arrested for insulting the judiciary. Well, guess what? A charge like insulting the judiciary can be used for just about anything. Almost anything you say can be interpreted by as insulting the judiciary so long as a judge takes offense at it, so long as a judge doesn't like it. So a country that has laws against insulting the judiciary has basically set up a dictatorship of the judges who can make anything illegal that they please. That's the real threat to an Egyptian democracy. Not the debate about whether you keep somebody in office for four years or take to the streets in order to get rid of that person. Meanwhile, we have similar laws in the United States. And those who write our headlines, those who warn us when there are dangers to our democracy, haven't told us about them. They are laws against making terroristic statements. And those laws, we've just checked, and it's difficult to determine how many states have them, but at least six laws have them. 
at least six, I mean, at least six states have them. At least six states make a felony out of saying something that a judge, a policeman, or in the case of one kid, your neighbor, interpret as potentially terroristic. One guy was having an argument with his wife and in the middle of the argument said, I wish I had blown your head off. And he was arrested for making terroristic statements. Now, how many of you in an argument with a wife or a girlfriend have not made statements like that? How many of you women have not made statements like that in a rage? Freedom of speech is being seriously limited. When a kid in Texas can make a sarcastic statement, be thrown into prison for five months, when the Constitution can be shredded in his case, the Constitution guarantees the following things. Freedom of speech. Sorry, he has not been given freedom of speech. Innocent until proven guilty. Sorry, he's being treated as if he were guilty and he hasn't even had a trial yet. The right to a speedy trial. No, I'm sorry, five months in jail with no trial is not the right to a speedy trial. And we don't have torture in the United States. It is cruel and unusual punishment is against the Constitution. So in the state of Texas, in the case of at least one kid, there is no Constitution. There are no constitutional rights. There is no freedom of speech. Torture is a well-accepted fact of life, and you are guilty until proven innocent. The people who tolerate this should be shot. That is a terroristic statement. Arrest me, please. And while you're arresting me, record this carefully. I have utter contempt for the judiciary.